Okay, this is going to be fun. I love I love critiquing faces. Okay, so this face, straight into liquify, is all you have to work with. And as I say in the book, um, <clears throat> the, the, the when you're when you have no props, the one prop that you do have is the entire face and and little mini props in it. And what you have to do is make sure that you have all the realism and everything that you need set up properly. All the measurements and the golden ratios, all of these set up properly. So that you can really take advantage of the fact that, well, you have to, because that's all that you have in this image right now. The face, and that's all that makes it up. And you frame the fa uh, face really good. I've seen some area people who, students who... Um, who don't frame the face at all and the, the canvas is always too small but this is really good I would recommend you push it up just a bit because there seems to be enough space for the bangs but not enough space for um, the neck which is not good but I don't want to increase the size of the image I'm just gonna push some stuff everywhere the size is good okay All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is show you the how long the face is. The face here looks very long, and as soon as you sort of bring down, push up some of that longness, you see how the face sort of looks a little bit more beautiful. But compared to before, before we pushed it down, do you see how overly mature it looked for the size of the eyes that you were working with? So what I'm going to do is just push it up for you just a bit. So that all the features stay the same size. The eyes are a bit too large. So that we can reach a nice, even measurement for all the faces. I do talk about the golden ratio and how to make the face look as beautiful as possible in the book. So all this information will be there. I can just refer you to the pages. And the chin seems a bit robust. So I talk about a lot, a lot in the videos. I don't cover everything that I talk about in the videos in the book because that's videos will be useless. But I talk there's a video about how to paint something cute. I know some of you have seen it, and it's all about the chin. The way you finalize the face through the chin really allows the beauty to shine through. Okay, that's part one. So the features, measurements, all that stuff. Next step is lighting and color. Um, you have these tiny little errors here with the coloring and the lighting. And one of these sides needs to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how intriguing it is to have one part of the face completely dark. And what this will do is... Look at the intrigue that it added. Someone is going to be like, wow, what's this girl hiding? And that's what it's all about. Painting the story, ask, making the person ask the questions, the, the right kind of questions. Because every, every painting is, is a chance to tell a story. And I think, I believe in that very, very much. And I'll talk about that as well in the book. So there's nothing that you could miss about what I'm talking about. It's pretty much me just repeating everything all over again every time we critique. <laughs> But what you need to do is attach these shadows. These shadows will create intrigue because it will look very, very realistic. Yeah. <clears throat> no, not full is, is uh, American. He's American. Okay. Next thing is the face looks very, very zoned out. So, Elise, the reason why the face looks zoned out is because what something, I tell you something very, very important, and that's um, to cross the eyes a little bit. Uh, I tell you guys to cross the eyes um, just a touch. So what I'm going to do is cross them right now. When they cross, it means that they're looking at something. So I want this gir this girl here, Merida or whoever it is, to look at the viewer. So what I'm going to do is try to get her to look at me, the the painter. 
So you, at least, you try to get her to look at you. What happens is that instantly there's this focus, and her face looks very, very realistic. Did everyone notice that? Now, everyone, I want everyone here, every single person looking at this f amazing little trick from Chris all the way down to Oreo. Please look at the before and after. Before, after. Does everyone see that difference? Before, after. She is instantly alive. She instantly wakes up. And your image doesn't need that much more correction at all. I mean, that's all that you needed to do. You needed to think about the realism and the way the realism will bring your character to life. It's not something that will ruin your painting, I promise. This realism will help you. Um, another important thing is the shadows. Again, the, the, the shading is very, very important. She needs a shadow stretching from her nose. Her nose sticks out and catches a lot of light. So I'm going to get a little bit of a yellow tone, a yellow peach tone, to add in her skin to show where the light is touching her skin. She looks a bit like Kate Middleton. Is that what her name is? The Princess Lady? Princess Bride. The pig works for the mafia, making some money off crack. Very, very insightful. I hope all of you wrote that down. Yeah, so it looks like that princess lady girl. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a little bit of contouring to the face to really bring out, bring out the lips. And I'm going to shade any area that's not sh facing the light that's coming from above her. So her top lip is going to be a little bit darker because it's pointing down. So if you guys don't believe me, just put your finger on your top lip and see how it goes down into your mouth. It points down. If you see it from the side... Wait, oh wow. Nose, it points downward. And then you have your upper lip pointing upward, which catches all the light. So next I'm going to do is catch some light in the bottom lip to add a little bit of gloss. Not gloss, but like a little bit of... Um, sort of shine, wetness, and to show that the, the upper lip, the, the lips are a bit moist. The area under the mouth, the chin area needs to be shaded. I am using a soft brush. Soft brush is really good for skin, but if you do want to have a painterly feel, imagine, if, is there a soft brush in, in traditional work? No. So you go for something that's a little bit less, less easy to blend, but with, with a nice texture in it. And then finally, what you need help with, um, wait, let me, let me just add a little bit of contouring to the eyes. You need a little bit of light on the inner corner of the eye, right here. It really brings the eyes to life. It makes them look a lot bigger. And in makeup, as I've said so many times, this is a trick we use in makeup. Is when we put white, sort of glowy, glittery eye shadow on that area of the eye. Okay, a little bit on the out lower part of the eyebrow, a little bit here, and here. <coughs> okay, and now what I do is the nose. The nose, I have a video about the nose, explains everything there is to know about a human nose and how to draw it. I really recommend you guys take advantage of these videos because I can't spend all the time explaining why and how but I do explain the why and how in a separate video I just I feel guilty for not explaining it to you at the moment of critique because I'm rushing through it to get to the others and I really want you guys to think about um, the, the independent learning process and how there's a part that I can't teach you even if I wanted to not that I don't want to <laughs> but there's a part that I can't teach you um, and you guys need to uh, think about how dedicated you are to this practice, that you'll go and learn it on your own. And there's videos available. So you're not really losing any, any time. It's just a process that shows you how to do it right there and then. So I'm just trying to shape out the nostrils, trying to find a little bit more form here, adding some shadow. And 
I'm just going to add in a little bit more. If I had time, I could form this nose to be a little bit more, you know, nosy. But so far, this is all the nose I have. I'm sorry for the time loss problem. Why do I finish my sentences so late? <laughs> Bad joke. And really, it's just about forming, sculpting. Sculpting is a very important word in this process. Yes, you can. Mm, MMA fighter, grandmaster. Okay, and you see how the nose bridge sometimes catches a little bit of light. Even if it's in the shadow, it's going to catch just a little bit of light. And look at that intrigue, instant awesomeness. I love shadows. I'm going to add a little bit of red. Not MAC makeup red, but just a little bit. And when there's a shadow, everyone watch this part. This is one of, uh, one of the amazing parts. Whenever there's a shadow, and Mattia knows about this very well, is that there's a sliver of red between the light and the shadow right along here. This, this nice sliver of red is very, very fun to draw, and it brings the character to light. I love this trick because it's just the most wonderful little trick, and it takes a little bit of time to appreciate. But when you add that little red, do you see what happens? Instantly, instantly wakes up. Let me show you another trick. This is this this is the sponge tool. I saturated this line here. I'm going to the desaturated desaturated areas with the desaturation uh, option on. I'm going to desaturate any of the shadows really deep inside the face. And now you have this gradual push towards the skin. And to further excel the the Whoa, my brain stopped. I could literally stop. <laughs> Excel the lighting. I'm going to bring in a yellow, which is the opposite of purple, which is what we got from desaturating. And I'm going to place this yellow just gently over all the lit areas here to bring a nice soft yellow. I'm going to put a little bit on her cheekbone. Well, I do want to, uh, Oreo, I do want to maintain that nice glow. So I'm going to keep the desaturation a bit like the way it is now. Okay? And there you have it. One last thing I could add, even though the lighting doesn't really um, allow it, is a nice white way up here to bring her eyes to life. And this is exactly the same style I used to paint this painting here. It's the exact same rules, essentially. Um, I don't know why, it's one of the most popular of my paint, and it, I hate the fact that it's one of the most popular, because all I did was just spend that time to do the exact same effect. I really didn't uh, do anything new, even the, even the way I painted it is so inconsistent. But this is why this painting was so popular, is because, like how many favorites? 960, that's like, the, I've, I've never done that before in my life. And the reason why this amused people is because of the lighting, the way the shadows of the hair fall, you know, the simple details and stuff like that. So as soon as you add this kind of stuff to your painting, Elise, I swear to God, people will respond. People like realism because it forces them to believe the character comes to life and everyone wants to escape the real, um, the, the, you know, this kind of reality and go into a new reality. And if you can show that that reality is realistic and it can exist... People will appreciate your drawings a lot better. Whoa, 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 whoa. So because the shadow is only in one area, I'm going to have to light up some parts here. And this actually intrigued me a little bit. Let me just delete some of the dodge here. I'm going to put some mid-tones. Because the light is allowing her hair to be visible. And as I've said many times, hair is very easy to dry. You just have to use large brushes versus small brushes. Start off large, end off small. Let me show you how quickly you can get hair to look realistic. I did the large brushes, shrunk the size of my brush. Going to get a darker tone. Added a couple lines here and there. Hair does overlap. I'm going to get a smaller brush.
very very quickly you really give value to your brush strokes you don't spend too much time get a little bit of the dodge tool in there and you have some hair okay so really really take advantage of these different rules and I have all of these in the book that's upcoming up I do not you know stinge out I talk about all of this stuff maybe you might darken the lips just a touch no I like them like this actually give me a second I will do the before and after okay so let's do the before and after now let's see the difference that applying realism makes to your drawings everybody ready before you see how the chin was pushed down the bangs had a little bit too much attention they didn't really need it there was no lighting the eyes didn't look at anything specific they weren't focused um, the lips were a little bit drooping down as if the chin lost all skeletal structure and the face is just drooping off the top of the, the, the you know, skeletal structure of the head. What I did was very, very simply, I tucked in everything using the liquify tool. M pushed up the face a little bit, added that shadow that you saw how I added that soft brush using the background color of the hair. I kept forming, thickened the eyebrows a little bit, eyebrows, connected them to the nose shadow push the eyes in together. Look at this. This is the moment where the face comes to life. After. Before. After. This is when the eyes come to life. And that's how you know if a person is alive. is because when you put your finger in front of their face and they, they're following the finger, it means they're conscious. But if they're unconscious and, and they're not following the light or their eyes aren't really responding, they're dead. Or they're unconscious. Or they had too much sugar. Now I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to the nose, forming the nose, giving the nose some form. Added that beautiful sliver of red. Did everyone see that? Just before, after. Added some cheekbone color, some eye lights, some hairs, and we're done. And watch this. If you apply these same exact by God, just do it and watch how people respond. People like realism. They really respond to it. Before, after. And save. And I'm going to send that back to you, Elise. I really want you to try this. Um, yeah. Wow, you destroyed whoever did that first draw. I, I'm not, my intention is not to destroy anyone, not to bring anyone down. Um, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. If I did, I would say, wow, this is really crappy. Wow, you need help. Wow, go to school. No, I don't say go to school because school sucks. School betrays you. I say, um, just listen. This is just a bunch of tiny little physics stuff. Um, and you will learn it if you apply it. That's it. Most of the time, the reason why we improve is because we've spent most of our time career ignoring the rules until it's too late where we realize, oh shit, I should have just followed these rules back when I was 14 and just started out. I wish I had a teacher who taught me these rules. I'm giving you the shortcut. Um, it's not a bad shortcut, it's a good shortcut because it'll save you time, it'll get your pockets fuller sooner. So yes, um, I don't intend on making anyone feel crappy or destroying anyone or flexing my muscles as some would call it. <clears throat> is this the <Ista> Photoshop? <laughs> this guy is hilarious. Is this the Photoshop? <laughs> um, I still have a lot to learn in Photoshop, though. I do talk about um, uh, uh, what's it called? Photoshop. I, I talk about the small tools and what these tools do. It's going to be covering everything that I ever talk about. Um, so I, I, I don't want to take your money and just take it just like that. I want to make sure that I've just regurgitated everything that's in my brain everything that I know that I've learned in my I don't know how many years of drawing into into this so I want to make sure you guys are um, really deserving I mean, I mean that I deserve the money that you guys are giving me yes Niall is sending me his Sarah portrait study desktop save no 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 I do have time Niall I do have time I do have time by all means, you can also add Esta as the record one in Canada. Yeah, you guys can add that too. Uh, would you have time for another one? Uh, yes, Cam, I do. 
Did I get yours? Um, let me see. Yeah, Niall, you really should start, I mean, uh, Mateo, you really should start using that. It's really fun. Okay, all of these are so beautiful. They're so much fun to look at. I'm very proud of you guys. Um, Chris, <clears throat> did you send me yours on Skype? Please send it on Skype because you guys are, um, are chatting and the Skype convo is sent straight up. Okay, I'm just going to drink some water before I faint. Okay, picture from Niz. Nizir isn't here again. <coughs> but I will cover it anyway. So I talked to Nazir already about this. I said that the background is too texturized. The background should never have more texture than the foreground because what does texture mean? Does anyone know? I'll just answer it. Texture means detail. <clears throat> and if you have t detail in the wrong spots, the eyes will look in that direction. They won't look at the main character. That's why you have to attract the main character by adding the detail to the main character. And that's it. Make the background fuzzier, blurrier than the main character is because that is exactly uh, what is supposed to happen in real life. The background is always blurrier and the person you're looking at, you know, face to face, if Mattia was in front of me right now, I would see every hair in his nose <laughs> because he is in front of me. And that's why I allow you, I tell you guys, please do not put detail in the background, put detail in the foreground. Yes, depth of, depth of field, depth. Why does that sound weird? It sounds like I have a lisp. <clears throat> okay, I think she's uh, he, or he, he or she is a bit busy. But yes, the lesson is Matias' hair, nose hairs. <laughs> that's how you will remember to put detail in the person that's facing you. The nose hairs of Matias. Great and powerful nose hairs. So that's something I talked to you about already, Niz. Um, another thing is the lighting. Um, she needs to have... <laughs> <laughs> You're screwed, Mattia. That's it. <laughs> there goes your self-respect in the chat. Just like Bob and Steve, you'll have your own pedestal in the Hall of Heroes of the class. So I'm going to throw some shadow on the two corners here. I'm going to try to get the light not to face. The gesture needs a tiny bit of help. It needs to be a little bit less eloquent and more vicious. It looks a bit dancey, but I like it. I'm going to add some light in all the areas that the light catches. You do have this lighting going on already, but you need a little bit more. And that's because it's very intense lighting here. And this is what we need to show. There seems to be only one light source coming through. That's pretty much all I really wanted to show you, Niz, is that the light source that you have chosen is very, very uh, spot on. And it's very sharp. And you need to show how sharp that light source is. So you see her, her, her hand is going to throw a shadow over her hair like this. Do you see what that does? Does everyone see what that shadow just did to the form? Can anyone, you know, just feel what I'm saying right now. It brought everything to life. Look at that. There's a shadow and her arm looks like it's 3D. And there you go. When other objects cast shadows on you, it makes things look realistic. But when the character itself casts shadow on itself, that's when things look, you know, take a whole new realm because that's, that happens in real life. And I really want you guys to, to um, show that in your work. Just because it's one character doesn't mean it doesn't cast shadows on itself. Uh, why more than one light? Um, what do you mean, why more than one light? You need, you can have more than one light if you want to, but you, it's nice when you have only one light source. I was talking about this yesterday. When you have only one light source in your still life images or um, any kind of image that you have, you really increase the drama. And the more drama you know, you have, the better you know, re uh, reception <laughs> you get with your students. Okay, I have a lot of stuff today, so you guys got to bear with me. It's been a while. People have been waiting. I'm so sorry for the big break we took. There's just been a lot of stuff, and I don't want to bore you with the details, but we had to work with the lawyers because I recently got married, and so we had to transfer all my papers, and I had to legalize my 
stationed in the U.S. before I get arrested by the terrorist police. <clears throat> in case they thought I was a terrorist or something. Destroying the world one painting at a time. So, um, thank you, Danny. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one other thing, I just did this with the other painting, is that line of saturation. Look at what that line does. I just love it. This line really just, um, look at what it does. It's a very tiny thing, and you really have to have artist's eye, and I'm sure all of you do, to really notice what it does. But it is very, very interesting. I will add a little bit of saturation on the shadow itself because it looks like her hair changed color as well, and I don't want to have that effect. just want it to look like there's a shadow on her head. <laughs> I will not terrorize. <laughs> um, so I wanted to welcome everyone else, all the new people here. Um, Sarah, Sarah Tron, Nailana, um, MMA Fighter, Mink, Leia, Jungle Pants, John... SCJ, um, Iron Horse, uh, who else? Elez, Linros, Danny, Cinder, Ovo, and everyone here who hasn't signed in who is to remain unnamed. Okay, and there's other other opportunities to cast shadows like this. Um, they, they seem to be out of out of the way because sometimes when we don't do proportions right what happens is that we don't have the, sh the chance to cast the shadows that way this arm needs to be a bit skinnier because it is stretched upward and I want to push this shoulder a little bit more this way and push the chest out a little bit more give her a little bit more you know feminine thickness as we would call it so that if the more curvature we see, again, the more drama. And finally, this leg here is a bit out of place. And what you need to do is show that it is a little bit, well, that's a bit too long. Okay, I'm just going to do a big blob. Or you know what? I'm just going to add in some grass. Because <laughs> I suck at legs, and everyone knows that. I suck at feet, like, big time. I barely ever study feet. I might want to learn feet from another artist. Psychra or something. But, um... But I would, I would like it better if the foot was over here. Because... The proportions seem to, to trail off in the right direction, and then you'll have that beautiful C-shape. So you won't have like a C-shape curved off to the side, running out of the canvas. You'll have a C-shape, just some a little gentle, um, you know, little curvature there. Okay, and then fade off that foot. And do you see what that does? Everything looks a little bit more um, proportionate. Anatomy is in check. And so before. Very flat, not much drama after. And there's all these other opportunities to add drama to your image. Um, you know, you could add like a small little ribbon that she has. You could add another weapon in her arm. Um, you know, all these kinds of things. But good job trying this kind of difficult pose. Very, very hard to try that and jump into that difficulty. So yes, on to Matias. Uh, Matias, we talked about this one before. You've done a, an amazing job. You've applied all of that stuff, but there's a small amount of stuff that you forgot to do or <clears throat> didn't feel like it was necessary yet. So let me take up my defense again for these little different things, and maybe I'll try to convince you. The main issue is that the body is perfect, but the head size is just way too small. And the reason why you're having trouble with this is because the head is pushed all the way up. And when you look at it, you think it's okay and you're not really having that much trouble. Because you're not really facing the head right off. It's not like a bust where you'll know, you'll know if it's too small. We're working with a full body and it's hard to keep things the same size and good measurements when you're working with a full body image. I just want to show you what decreasing the size of her face will do. The head and the hair is a bit too high up. Um, women used to wear their hair like this when they had absolutely nothing to do. So back in the Victorian era or, you know, all those other eras. 
renaissance and stuff. That's when hair was that big. Because it's very hard, it's very out of function. She seems like she's ready to fight. Or ready to jump around, around the, the roofs of a city top somewhere in, um, what's that? What's that? I don't know what that country. Venice. Okay. But before, you can tell how very disproportionate the head looked. Almost in the uncanny valley. So, you want to stay away from the uncanny valley, Mr. Mattia. You want to stay far away from that uncanny valley because what happens is that if you paint something realistic and it takes on this kind of improportionate stuff, you're going to have a little bit of trouble convincing the audience that this is realistic. Even though you did spend a lot of time and you're, you know, it's no less value to you as an artist, you're working hard and everyone can see that you're working hard. And the main issue is applying the tiny little corrections that you do find so that you can really achieve um, that kind of... Yeah, um, you should see them. They're huge. Um, they're, I don't know, the hair that they had was just... You couldn't function in them. You couldn't move because it was just the big hairdo that had to stay. It was like balancing a, a, a bowl of hair on your head for 24 or 12, 12 hours or whatever. So ha remember, Mattia, function is important. Function is as important as fact. I don't know what the other word is to match it with, but... <clears throat> If you do want to make it like that, um, you are have, have already taken on that kind of you know intricacy with the hair, so it does look good. But for it to be this big, it seems a bit off because usually these kinds of things come with dresses this massive, and it's a very display kind of thing. But she's very active. She looks like she's very athletic. So I don't know what function that kind of hair would add to her character design. You can add it in, but to some people it will seem weird because they're used to seeing large hair and big dress and big butt and like huge boobs with a huge corset, I mean like tight corset and like tiny little... This is the basic, you know, standard. And when you don't have both items in the collectible you don't have both collectible items in your collection. You're going to have a really weird looking drawing. And it's going to look a lot like a 60s beehive than a Victorian era um, updo. Okay, so I recommend shortening the, the size or shrinking the size of her head so it matches the athleticism that you're also showing in the painting. Increasing the size of her head also helps. So before, do you see that function was a bit off? It really broke, and you were in the uncanny valley a little bit after. Uncanny valley is a scary place to be. Just remember when SpongeBob went to, you know, the land, and they all do the fart noise like this. What was that land called? Far, far, no, not far, far away. And SpongeBob, when he takes the bus and he gets lost, and he's like, he goes down this edge. <laughs> That's the uncanny valley, guys. Yes, the abyss. I don't know what it is. But that's the Uncanny Valley and stay away from it. Okay, so it's very well done. Your rendering is amazing. Your applying of lighting. I love the bracelets here. I love the way you did the form. The breast looks very, uh, very well done. Things tend to move down properly. The, the, the gesture line as well. And she looks like she's standing on a stable ground, which is just all awesome. But you just need a tiny little bit of help with the size of the head. Okay, and I'll send that back to you. Um... I'll go for this one. Got this one next, I believe. So this one, I love faces. Um, you do have a light source, um, but what I recommend is it's very thick at this moment. Brush strokes are very thick, and I'm not sure where to take it for you. But all I can really do is take it, take on the more the lighting issue here. I'm going to use the soft brush. I love your um, detail and your and your textures, but I'm going to show you what decreasing the level of these dark areas do for you. The eyebrows are a bit too dark. And what that does is it throws off this, these important aspects of the face. So I'm going to give them a very, very general darkness. And I'm going to give a nice little space in between the eyebrow and the eyes. As I have said many times before, there are specific dark areas on the face that you need to remember. The eyes, the two nostrils, and the lip corners. If you don't have these areas darkened, your image will suffer suffer a great suffering suffering so what I'm gonna do is darken these areas here for you darken the nostrils 
and darken the lip corners. Look at how the image came to life. And the more we the more we work with the soft brush to bring out the form, the more we're going to see the image come to life. If you want a more natural looking lip, <clears throat> try to blend it with the skin around it. If you don't want it to, want her to look like she is liner I am lip liner on or lipstick. Okay? I'm going to add in some shadow under the chin. I'm going to add in a little bit of light around the lip area. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get a bit light and throw in some of that lighting under the eyebrow. And as much as you paint the bottom lid, you paint the up, upper lid, you paint the bottom lid. It's very, very important. And make sure that there's a halo of darkness around the eyebrows. Because what that will do is make the eyebrows look more realistic and less drawn in. You don't want scow's brows. You don't want to show like you're drawing eyebrows that have been sketched in with a pencil and with a sharpie. Scow's brow. I don't know what to... Like this. Do you see this? It looks very fake because there's no halo of darkness representing the growth of the hair. This is the girl before the eyebrows. Can you just look at that? horrific atrocity against beauty. Not that she's ugly, she's gorgeous. It's just that she could have done her eyebrows a lot differently. Okay, let's throw some lighting in here. And she looks like her eyes are hooded, which is really going to help you create a convincing looking face. Not Asian, not Asian enough. The Asian eyes, I do love painting those. They're very fun. Um, but hooded and these kinds of little details about what, what a hooded eye is, what an almond shape eye is, that's your independent study time. You go around and look at what kind of eyes there are and what kind of eyes you like to draw. It'll really change the way you look at a human face and it'll make you appreciate features a lot better. The tiniest little change of measurement, the tiniest little placement of a shadow will change your image completely. So all the darkest areas of the face, I keep them the darkest. Now there's a touch more realism to the face. Um, I do recommend painting the head completely. I'm not really looking at you guys right now. I'm very, very sorry. My eyes are on the canvas. I will look, scroll up in a second. If you have any questions that I missed, please ask them now. I'm just going to add in her skull so that the image looks complete. She might be bald, which looks really cool. I like the way I like the turtleneck and the baldness. Just not Wolverine? Just not Wolverine? Oh, yeah, that snake lady in the Wolverine movie. God, that movie was shit. I'm sorry for anyone who likes it. That movie was horrific. They really destroyed Wolverine. They just. Raped him right up the butt. <coughs> you can't really ask her where she learned from, unless you are like Esther the Fifth. I told, I was told not to use soft brush to so just use to find at the end. Yes, yes, you can do that, uh, Sarah Bella. You can. Um, I'm just when you render the face completely, it's really nice to use the soft brush because it really brings out the the the, the you know the actual softness of human skin, which is very very soft. Especially if, she, if the character has perfect skin and stuff like that and you want to show that. I love textures. Like I said, I hate the fact that I'm painting over the textures, but the soft brush is very easy to teach with. Um, and it you know, gets the job done on time. If I use a texture brush, I'm going to have to blend and preserve the textures. It's going to take a lot more time. She does look Asian now. And if you don't like that effect, not that, nothing against Asian faces, just add in the crease. And like I said before, Asian faces are Asian because, to any Asians here who disagree with me, please let me know. You have the eye, you have the, the corner, you have the upper lid completely outdented, and you have the bottom lid completely out. That's what makes an Asian, an eye Asian. A Caucasian eye is when you have, what am I doing? How am I drawing faces right now? Okay. You have this eye, and then you have the crease. 
and then another tiny crease on top. No crease here, but a crease here. This eye looks more Caucasian. It's all about where you place the lines. Okay. Um, wait, wait. Who's... I'm going to scroll up. Everyone has here has scowls around. <laughs> um... There was a reason, but I don't want to say what it was to draw attention to it. What, what is the reason? Yes, there are no lines, Mattia. Yeah, exactly. So in the end, you have to shade these and show how these lines represent form. Shadows, no lines exist in nature. Yes, exactly. So the line of shading is essentially what I mean. So these lines here that I just did... Do that and you see that effect before I added this looks like she got punched in one eye I think and she had like a bunch of bruising if you want to paint a character that has been punched in the eye um, one eye will be bruised meaning no creases will be there because the skin has pushed up so much that the creasing has has dis has made the the bulging and the swelling has made the crease disappear and one eye can have this the Uh, the, the Caucasian eye, and one can have the Asian eye that looks a bit more bruised. Nothing against it. I have a lot of Asian friends, and I love them very much. <laughs> so nobody go quoting me on that. Okay, just to show you how you guys can, you know, if anyone here is planning on painting someone fighting. And then, of course, the discoloration, the purples, the reds, the greens, the blues, the blacks. A little bit of shading on the inner corners. And you see how this face is coming to life? <clears throat> a little bit of shadow above the nose. And look at the realism that we're witnessing here come to life. It's because all about the form and the way you create that form. And if you guys are, you know, sit hearing me to babble on and on and not babble on, um, not like, you know, take a break for you guys to take notes. All these notes are going to be in the book that will be released soon. Okay, and it's not going to hurt to add in a little bit of light. Okay. Save. And I'll show you the before and after. No. <laughs> That's the quote. 2013. Ah, oh, you criminal. So before, do you see how the eyes look very still, very unmoving? They did have a sense of focus they were a little bit crossed but after we apply all of that lighting and color and you know you don't have to take the way I took it you can make the face look different but this is just how I paint faces you know adding those shadows making sure that all the dark parts of the face are the, are the spots that are important so the two corners the nostrils are completely covered in light darkness and the eyebrows are way too dark very scousy so lighten up everything and bring in the dark spots only in the areas that really matter Uh, I'm writing a book currently that has all of the stuff I've ever taught you guys in the past year or a year and a half or two years. I think it's two years, yeah. <clears throat> Desktop, save, Chris Wilson. Is the image too small? Uh, uh, I can't save it, Chris. For some reason, the site, the Giazzo site that you've given me, um, uh, gives me trouble. By the way, everyone, at the end of this class, message me if I critiqued you so I can give you back the original file and you can reference. Okay, next up is Mr. Niles. Very, very beautiful work. You're working with two extreme face perspectives. One of them is the hardest one, and one of them is the easiest one. This is the easy one. This is the hard one. Three-quarter view almost into profile is very, very hard. And though they are alien-like, um, this one needs have to have the nose dented in just a bit. Not that much. Just give her a tiny little nose job. That way the other eye can easily be seen. So that the viewer can continue their look on these little demon girls. Okay? Give a little bit of lightness on one side to introduce the corner and bring in some light just a bit to show the teeth. Niall, I can't really express how much you've improved. It's just amazing. 
this light source here, this one here, will cause like like very delicate illumination around them. And it's very, very beautiful. It's a beautiful form of, of you know, um, uh, what's it called? Lighting, silhouetting. I talk a lot about that in the book, so don't worry if you don't know anything about it. And what you can do is introduce some of that light out into the corner here so that we can see the part of her face that's covered in the dark. Because I don't like it when beautiful form is lost in shadow. Sometimes we need a little bit of light to reveal the form. So what this is doing is it's revealing the form of her face off to the side. And if it's a bit too much for your taste, just get your dark tone and, and shade over it until you like the effect. That way we can see her face. Okay, Niall? But the, the faces you paint, there's just it's done. It's, it's done. You're you're done with faces. You're good to go. I want you now to practice other stuff. Um, you know, figures and arms and feet. I know you have trouble with hands. I'm sorry that if I failed you, I need to. You know, I haven't done any classes on hands at all. I'm sorry about that, guys. But I will be soon. I promise. Just as soon as this you know financial problem is over, and we can really focus on class together. And just like she has a little bit of lighting on her face, you put a little bit on this girl's face. And that's it. This girl is just beautiful. I love the fa I love the features you've placed on her. I love how dead she looks. And the lips. Can everyone just appreciate the way he's painted the lips for just a second? The blood, the way they look like they're hiding. Very, very thick teeth underneath. Very, very sharp. Um, one thing that you can do for the eyes that do look a tiny bit flat is allow the whole eye to glow. If this character is demonic and the, eye, the eyes are a light source that glow in the dark, how can the whole eye, only one part of the eye, be green and none of that green reflect onto the other parts of the eye? So the one thing that you can do is really give them that glow. And that glow will create a nice effect. Also, you have this black around the eye shape. Um, this really, really thick black here. What I recommend is you haze that out, sort of remove that glowy part, I mean the, the dark outline around the pupil. Well, that will do is make her eyes look more dead, more undefined. Give a bit of an elongated uh, pupil right here. It's a bit anime, but I like that. And as soon as you give that nice elongated purple thing going on, the eye looks just a bit more menacing, but at the same time still beautiful. Don't forget to shade the outer corners and the inner corners. And one thing that will bring the eye to life, I've taught you guys this many times, is the waterline. Is that waterline over here? Especially in up a light facing from above, that waterline really catches the light. Like that. Maybe not that thick, maybe a little bit more pink, but it nevertheless serves the purpose. I'll make it a little bit red. To show that her eyes are bloodshot. For blush, um, what I recommend is getting a nice purpley red somewhere in this area and using that as the blush because her face is purple. And what happens with purple faces is that everything goes purple, including the red. And how do you make red more purple? You add a little bit more blue, which is the undertone of her face. So add some of that blue everywhere here. She's got a lot of blue and some areas don't have that blue and you need to add that in to make her look a bit more um, consistent all around. This girl's face isn't so blue, but you need to have a little bit more on her skin tone to make them match just a bit. And a little bit more red, just on the outer corners. And if you really see makeup and the way makeup works, it really does um, inspire a lot of portraiture, especially, especially editorial fashion shoots. They're very, very fun. And just like we did with that painting earlier, we have to add in some sort of shadow to create the mystery. And I know you might not like the shadow here, but what it will do is it will give us a chance to really reveal how glowy these eyes are. 
You still have the face. You still have everything that the face is all about. But what changes is the atmosphere, the mood. You know, areas that you really want to illuminate are illuminated, and areas you want to keep dark. If it's a bit too dark for you, just bring it up just a touch. And what that will do for us is allow us to really take advantage of this outer glow over here. Really just to bring it to life. One other thing that you could do is play with the cliches a little bit and add some reds to the hair. That will really just, you know, you know, it does look like Little Mermaid now, but I like the vampiric touch. Or you could add a blue or a purple, but something that will bring out the hair from the background. I heard you like shadows. <laughs> Okay, and one more thing, um, Niall. Her her body is entirely encased, their bodies are entirely encased in light where their faces aren't. So what you have is a chance to really play around with the way the body's form works. Show how skinny and dead-like they are. And You know, if you want to play the, with, with the scale thing, by all means. I don't know where my scale brush is. This thing is just a miracle. I love it. I don't know who gave it to us a couple years ago. I mean, a couple months ago. But you can really add in the scales. You can make them look a little bit more crazy. And demonic. This is a fun little tool. I love I love this brush. Talk a lot about how to use brushes also in, in the book. So you're not really missing out. I do include some of these brushes in. Okay. Wait, if light is dominant and darkness is submissive, is light man and dark woman and then shadow is child? What? No, Oreo. Light is woman. Darkness is man. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. I'm joking. You can add in some of that uh, scaling onto the face. I mean, have fun with it. Go nuts. It'll really just, you know, make everything pop. There's a lot of these brushes available online, you know, if this brush doesn't ne necessarily suit your touch. There's a lot of these brushes. Drop spike. <laughs> uh. Okay. And then keep on going. And we have some blues over here. So what I'm going to do is get a color layer and unify the, the, the light source with the objects. So I'm going to get this light source and get the color layer and get that light source everywhere in the outer space, outer space, outer area where that color is and merge that down. And what I recommend is using a color that is complementary to the green of their eyes. So what's complementary of green, everybody? It's reddish or pinkish, depending on the kind of green you're using. And that can really bring out the eyes. Look at how the eyes pop. Does everybody see that? See how all the eyes just, you know, stick right out? You guys are color now. <laughs> oh, there's Michael. Right on time. Exactly on the thing I needed you to answer so many, so many months ago. That's what you call a dramatic entrance. Red motherfucker. Okay? So you see how that complements compared to before where it was just very dull. The colors are monochromatic. But when you throw in a complementary, the image explodes and you have that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful contrast that everybody loves. Add in some illumination. And there you have it. Looks like enemies from Sailor Moon. You know those girls in Sailor I forget. Were they evil? Okay. Also, once I zoom out, I notice a tiny little issue, and that's with the area here. I really want to create a shadow, just like, you know, an area where they can play around. And to further take the, con the, the concept somewhere else, use the glowy parts to reveal some dead bodies, you know, some arms sticking somewhere in the distance, some 
guy's penis cut off. I don't know what to tell you. Um, of course, Niall. What? Give it PG? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. So the things that I did. The first thing that I did was I fixed the girl's nose. See how it looks now? Fixed the girl's nose. It looked a little bit um, off. Made the other eye visible because that's what would be visible if the face was facing like that unless her nose is extremely large and there's no, there's no dent in the nose on the eyebrow. I mean the brow bone. I removed the arrow that's pointing to her face. I added some outlines around the hair from the light source. I added a little bit of illumination on the corner of the face is from the light source. I added a little bit on the corner of the girl's face uh, to the right. I added some shadow at the tops of the eyes and remove the dark line that surrounds the eyes to give them more of a dead demonic look. I sort of brought down the pupil to make them look more snake-like. And I added the waterline, Niall. Don't forget the waterline. I added red to the waterline, a little bit of purple blush to the body. I blew it out the, the body color completely so that it looks consistent. I added that huge line of shadow. Does everyone see that beautiful miracle of light that happens when you add a shadow in? Instant drama, which happens a lot in, um, in Hollywood. I erased the shadow around the eyes. I, um, <coughs> then what is a fire line? <laughs> um, I illuminated the edges of the face, um, of the hair to catch the light. I added some detail with the scales. I added some scales on their face. And then I greened out everything and then brought in the red to, to glow a little bit and bring out the green. I'm going to saturate the green just a touch so that it really pops out because the red is sort of overwhelming the image. Okay, and that's it, Niall. All right, you can do all of this. <coughs> I'm calling not full Hindu. Mm. They're calling you. They demand your presence. <coughs> okay, Niall. So let's do a before and after. Before, the color scheme was beautiful. It was very nice. I loved how things looked. But a little bit of tiny corrections, a little bit of drama, and some dramatization can really give your image some more life. However, um, because the hair seems very thick, you can drench some parts of the face in a little bit of shadow since we're entertaining that. You can do that. But I like the form that we see when the face is a little bit less, um, what's it called? Less invisible. You can um, add in some sort of light source. Maybe they're holding hand in hand. You know, let it out. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, PG, PG, PG. <clears throat> and bring in, um, uh, what's it called? A light source. That This light source, of course not in this shape. Lessen it out. Yes, exactly what I said. This light source here, what it will do is it will reveal the form of this face over here. Face of this madame here and what that will do is increase the form and you have a little bit of that shadow in the corner of the nose and then look at look at what that did that revealed all the form that we were afraid of losing earlier and what that will do is it will reveal even more form this is called using a secondary light source when there's so much shadow that your form is lost that's when you need to start using a secondary light source some of that light will go onto her shoulder, onto her breast area, and we'll reveal all of that stuff that we didn't have earlier. Do you see Niall? Okay, so the same thing on the other side. Light source here, light source here, revealing some of the areas here, revealing on the shoulders, then finally ending there. Ok, 
Okay, you can make them holding some sort of like glowy orb they stole from the Queen of Light. I don't know. Maybe they're earrings. Maybe they collect earrings. You could add earrings. They are supposed to, you know. Um, <coughs> I'll add it in here in case they forget. Actually, no, let me remove them first. You know, they are supposed to be deceiving people. You can add those in. Secondary light source. And what else do I recommend? Um, that's it, really. That's all. I can send you the, 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 the scale brush that I, that I used on this. Okay? Oh, and make sure to have a glowy halo surround the light source or else, or else it'll look very fake. 